Yeah, no, that's interesting. That's very helpful. So I have a question that, you know, has been asked a few times now over the past few weeks, and I'm sort of getting mixed results. So I'm curious to know from you, because I've actually heard differing answers from different professionals. Um, and it has to do with getting, let me see if I can find it. Someone just asked it, but I have it here too, because a bunch of people um, sent it in. And Dennis says, you can only get one thing. It's either PPP or unemployment. Uh, I'm assuming he says not both. So I guess my question to you, Logan, is um, can you get a PPP loan and unemployment insurance? Because sort of what we've seen happen is, you know, at first, right, there was no unemployment, right? Everyone, especially with the drivers and the independent, you know, contractor crew, they they were waiting for these PUA websites to get set up and all that. And the PPP loans, there was all this buzz around the PPP loans. And so I know a lot of people applied for one. And now some driver, you know, a lot of people are starting to get unemployment um, or PUA. And uh, now they're getting their PPP loans back and saying they were either approved or, you know, they're, they're wondering right. what they should do. So what have you seen there is there like specific guidance from the irs or anything like that you know i mean i'm I, in this for this matter i say you should be safe i mean collect pua um you know but then once you get that ppp money that ppp money is supposed to be used for payroll and part right. of that would be to pay yourself right so i think a conservative position would be you know don't really double dip there uh, yeah. because when you're going to do your your unemployment reporting for your business you know they're gonna they're gonna see that kind of disconnect yeah. right when you file your unemployment tax form for your business. Um, of course, I'm speaking from like a business owner's perspective that actually has to do that quarterly reporting, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to submit it to your state and they're gonna say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. So you had all this, you got the, uh, you know, you paid yourself payroll, but then, you know, from the PPP funds, but then you, you were also collecting PUA. Why is, why is that happening? Yeah. Um, will, they, will they have the protocols in place to <laughs> uh, catch that for everybody um you know or push back on that for everybody i don't know because there's just such a whole high volume here but i think the conservative position would be um you know if you got that uh, the pua um you know probably best to put the pause on once you get those ppp funds right which are yeah. supposed to be uh, to pay pay payroll and, and including yourself yeah. Um, so that, and, that's my take on that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that we just released a video this morning, um, you know, people are curious, kind of explaining what each of these programs are. So if you guys are wondering what the hell PPP is, you, you know, maybe you've been living under a rock for the past few months or not watching the channel, we've been covering it extensively. But I think the thing, a lot of times, you know, I think I really liked your explanation, Logan, because there isn't, you know, like clear cut rules for a lot of these situations and a lot of these programs because they're so new and they're changing so quickly. And so I think you have to just think about it logically and understand understand what the potential risk is. So like the example, you know, you highlighted is perfect. Like what is PUA for? Um, you know, it's like that unemployment insurance. Okay, so what is PPP loan for? It's to cover your payroll for two and a half months, right? So if you're getting unemployment insurance and you're now applying for a PPP loan to also cover your payroll, it seems like you're sort of double dipping, right? So if you did that and got caught and got in trouble, like you probably shouldn't be shocked. <laughs> you know, it would be kind of like right. the simple way of saying that, um, you know, are they going to catch you? you know, I, I don't know, your guess is, good, is as good as mine. Andrew here from YouTube, he says, I really don't have faith in the EDD. If they already asked my income and they now have it, it'll conflict with PUA and maybe screw that over or not, we'll see, right? And so I think that's kind of like summing up the fact that, um, you know, like we, we don't really know, right? I mean, like, you don't know for sure. Like these guys are definitely overwhelmed and it's gonna be a state by state issue. Um, I've even seen some guidance from some some people have said that their state, you know, they called their um, you know EDD office, I guess, in their respective state, because you know, again, unemployment insurance is a state by state thing, and they were told that they could do PPP and unemployment insurance. So I think that if you want to, you know, if you want to be safe, probably don't double dip. But um, you know, if you get confirmation from some official source, and especially if you have it in writing, then it's probably to go right <laughs> yeah that that usually tends to be the case although i have found that when you call people on the phone at whether it's the irs or state agencies um sometimes they do say things or even email yeah. things that uh you know if it's in conflictance with some other official guidance the state or the irs has the irs would say hey well this this is the authority you know what yeah. they said is to be taken as less authority as as what you know the official guidance is so um but yeah generally if you do have an email or something like that um, it can it can really help your case, um, yeah. but and of course some states are more aggressive than others as as we know. Plenty and, of questions you know, yeah. here for you. I, I just see one here from Lawrence Oliver. Hey, anyone know a good online bank I can go to so I can apply for the PPP? Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of those fintechs, you know. Yep. There's like you know Lendio. I mean, I personally Lendio is a good one. Yeah, Lendio is a great one. I personally use Cabbage. Um, 
and I got mine approved. Like I submitted my application mm-hmm. like in the evening time and the next morning I got the email that it was approved. Wow. So um, was this recently or? Yeah, it was recently. Yeah, it was actually uh, just this week. So um, oh, cool. yeah, so yeah, the money's still uh... out there with, for the PPP. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah. well, the money's running dry and yeah, it's going quickly. But um, don't be discouraged if you haven't applied yet. And, yeah, you, you know, know, I uh, I will say, you know, so on last week's YouTube Live with Jay, one of my senior contributors, we talked about Lendio. He applied um, through Lendio and hasn't gotten his PPP loan yet, but they do seem to be quickly processing. And I, I did kind of make a joke that I hope that they reach out to me and sponsor the video. I think I tweeted them. Nothing yet, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe they can come back to me. Uh, so Lendio is definitely a good option. And um, I mean, have you heard of many, uh, you know, so I got PPP loan as my business, you know, sort of my rideshare business, my media business, right? I applied because I'm technically an LLC as escort. Most drivers, though, you know, most Uber and Lyft drivers aren't that. They're typically sole proprietors. Have you found that many people applying for a PPP loan as a sole proprietor are getting it? Because I only in the past week, I've only heard of one or two drivers in that situation actually getting the PPP loan. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is trickier for that sole proprietor independent contractor crowd uh, because they have to submit their Schedule C. Right. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, that's what they a should bit of, still have, though. Right. I mean, it's they, they should still have that. But um, from a lending perspective, they'd rather just have the, the W3, the 940, mm. you know, actual W2 wages. Gotcha. Right. That, so it's that easier. kind of thing. Easier, mm. easier documentation. Right. Which, you know, you probably did for your business, yeah. you know, reporting the wages and my tax returns. People. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. So um, they are. That's what I'm seeing as well. They're definitely it seems a lot more streamlined mm-hmm. for businesses that have, you know, a separate um, legal entity, a separate, you know, tax structure. Um, yeah. it, it seems to be a lot more streamlined for them than for the independent contractor crowd. I mean, yeah, I've heard people, you know, even with the with the with the lenders, the fintechs I mentioned, you know, I'm seeing folks that, uh, you know, independent contractors who applied a while ago still have gotten kind of gotten crickets. Yeah. Well, it seems that for those that have that structure set up, um, it's just an easier, it's just, just an easier underwriting process, I imagine, from the lender's perspective. So gotcha. yeah. um, it's That's, unfortunate. Uh, but. Yeah. No.